Hey everybody, this is Sayon Johnson with Cigar Conversations and I'm bringing you another quick puff with Cohiba and it, every time you say Cohiba, what is it synonymous with? The man, the myth, the legend. Oh man, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this is the easy thing for you, man. I'm always uh, getting on you for um, being in Aspen, being in, uh, in Dubai and all of that. Every time I see you, you are, you know, just cognac and, you know, the, 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 oh, you blushing, man? You hey, blushing, man? man? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're here today because one, I like to smoke, you like to smoke, and mm -hmm. this dropped last week, mm -hmm. okay? So it's the Series M. Tell me about this. Uh, well, the Cohiba Series M is the um, uh, first Cohiba ever made in, uh, in the USA. Uh, made in Miami, thus Siri M, uh, and also as it, the band sort of denotes Miami, USA. Um, this just sort of really, really um, uh, different sort of out of the box uh, approach to uh, to a project uh, that we've done as far as Cohiba, uh, making it first off making the USA is obviously the first time ever been done, uh, but making it in a really uh, small. Uh, family owned, uh, really, really uh, just super personal uh, factory with the L Titan Bronze, a uh, factory that I'm familiar with, almost like family to me, uh, having made cigars with them uh, um, years ago and, and over a number of years. Um, so it's just really, really, really cool to, to, to bring such a, uh, a, a juggernaut, such a, a, a big brand like Cohiba and make it um, in such a, just sort of a, a small family, um, you know, intimate operation like Titan Bronze. But when you say uh, made in Miami, are we talking about the farms in South in, uh, in South Dade, Miami, or uh, <laughs> or the, the leaves are in Nicaragua? Yeah, no, 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 no. So, so the cigars <laughs> made in, in, in Miami or Cayocho in Little Havana. There you um, go. Uh, the breakdown, the, the wrapper is uh, Ecuador and Corojo. Uh, binder is uh, Nicaraguan Esteli. And in the filler you have uh, uh, some more Esteli, some Jalapa, uh, which is you know, Jalapa Valley, Nicaragua, and and, uh, and political bottom. So, okay. um, primarily Nicaraguan uh, in 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 its makeup, uh, with a little bit of uh, Dominican political bottom uh, splashed into the filler. So, yeah. How many um, how many different uh, facings Cohiba have on their profile? Because you guys come up with a new one almost every year, which well, is very challenging. Yeah, it is challenging. Uh, so. But what we do is a little different. Um, as far as facings, I mean, if I if I just kind of run down the list, uh, the red dot, which is, is which is the Godfather. That's uh, right. It's this boy here, uh, the original uh, Cameroon blend. Um, that's the cornerstone of everything, uh, honestly. So uh, you got the red dot, you got the Cohiba Black, which is a beautiful Connecticut broadleaf ra uh, wrapper grown in the Connecticut River Valley in the USA. Um, you have the uh, uh, Cohiba Connecticut. Um, which is the one in the white box. You have the uh, Cohiba Nicaragua, you have the Cohiba Macazar, you have the Cohiba Royale, you have the Cohiba Blue. <laughs> so those are, those are seven sort of uh, uh, regular production cigars. Okay, okay. But you know, we, we drop the Spectre each year, which we've done for the last few years, but that special one and done release. Correct. Um, and this is, uh, this is um, you know, a, a one drop that we're going to do at the Cohiba Serie M this year. We also do Spectre later in the year. So we sprinkle in um, these really limited, super limited uh, uh, production projects. But as far as the core, consistently regular produced uh, uh, stuff, I mean, seven different uh, lines within within entire range. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not not super heavy, but we want to make sure we got everything covered, man. Uh, not everything, but we want to make sure that we have a good variety and a good breath to offer to the cigar audience, right? So 
uh, with the red dot, you know, you got the original authentic Cameroon out of the Congo Republic of Africa. So, you know, that's something very, very distinctive in its profile. With the black, uh, as I touched on, uh, Connecticut broadleaf, which is, you know, like an OG Maduro. Right, um, right. You know, and, and, and again, representative of, 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 you know, the best tobacco that we grow here in the USA. Um, with the Cohiba Nicaragua, but that was the first Cohiba to be made in, in Nicaragua. So it really speaks to that profile with an Oscuro wrapper, all Nicaraguan binding filler. Um, the Cohiba Blue is really representative of Honduras, has the, has the Olancha San Agustin wrapper and binder, also has Hamastron, Honduran Valley tobacco in the filler. So it kind of speaks to the Honduran uh, um, profile. You, know, you talk about the Cohiba Connecticut, uh, has a, a Ecuadorian uh, grown, Los, Rios, Los Rios region grown uh, wrapper from Ecuador. So it kind of speaks to that, uh, that profile. Then with the uh, Royale, it's 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 more heavy, heavy uh, Nicaraguan, well balanced, but the fullest of, of, of the cigars. That's, you know, that, yeah, that. I love that. I love that Valley boy. Nicaraguan yes. wrapper. So you know, so we, we want to make sure that that we have something. If 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 you seek out a Cohiba, there should be something that sort of speaks to your palate with the, within the profile. And now with the with the uh, addition of the uh, Serie M, we now have an Ecuador and Corojo, which we didn't have a Corojo at all in the portfolio. So oh really? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, that, that that part I didn't know. Cause I, as much as um, I, the uh, the the blue dot, red dot, um, those are the, those I love. The um, the what do you call it? The um, the Spectre, mm. phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, but that's that's a unicorn, right? We're, we're literally <laughs> a, a couple thousand cigars of those are made. So, and that's what I want. That was gonna be my next question. Um. What since since you uh, what has rolled out that has actually surprised you? Because you you guys put out obviously mm -hmm. to please the audience, mm -hmm. but it has taken up taken on a life of its own. What has actually you know just blown you guys out of the water as far as uh, damn I can't believe we did that. Uh, I don't know. I, maybe a couple of different things for different reasons. Uh, you, You'd have to say Spectre, and, and the first time, uh, first release of Spectre we did was 2018, uh, and a lot of things about that was ambitious, um, because conversely, the cigar that was released prior to that uh, in 2017, in spring of 2017, was Cohiba Blue, which is really sort of the entry level vehicle for Cohiba. You know, uh, it's the one that's sort of more um, budget friendly, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term. Uh, and then to come out with Spectre a year and a half later, <laughs> which is literally the most expensive cigar that General Cigars and companies ever put out, let alone Cohiba. Um, that was that was that was um, a risk, right? So, right. Um, but it was it was a risk worth, worth taking, you know. Um, you know, when 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 you know we sit down and we start planning it out and say, hey, you know, you go uh, get with the factory and you guys just make, you know. Whatever cigar you want to make, just 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 make it special, make it good, you know. And we don't care about the cost, right? So that's a blank canvas. Yes. Um, you know, so going into it, you, you, you know that you you can you can kind of swing for the fences, uh, but you know you don't know if it's going to be a home run, right? Um, but it turned out that, that that it was. You know, it was it was a fun cigar to to work on in a lot of respects, um, and the market really responded to it, and we learned a lot about. Um, about uh, the brand support for for Cohiba, which really you know um, you know was encouraging for us, uh, and, and gave us you know a, you know the, the latitude to really really um, you know try new things to to, to bring to uh, the, the Cohiba audience, which they responded to over the last few years. So it's been uh, it's been great, man. It's been great. One thing I know, um, the Spectre, you get to definitely raise the bar. Mm -hmm. So now. Do you think it, it, make, it you know it makes you it makes it harder for you guys to go ahead and say okay each each year we're gonna have to uh, push the bar? I think with night with uh, 2019 with the Spectre, mm -hmm. it catapults you guys at least two years for what for what you guys have done as far as what the next one's gonna be. So now, how do you feel? Yeah, so so 2019 um, of the of the of the two releases was my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. For a, for a couple of reasons, um, you know, the size was more uh, in line with, with, with what I really liked. The first Spectre was a seven by fifty-four, a larger platform than I normally mm -hmm. smoke, but there was a reason it, it, it was that size. Um, conversely, um, 
the 2019 was a 6x49, which is more in line with the traditional Toro. Right. So it performed a little bit uh, um, um, fuller, you know, uh, a little bit more upfront spice, like that uh, a lot. Um, but we didn't release one in 2020 because 2020. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we're in 2021, but technically, I think we're going to work for a while. One year behind, so this yeah, is 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so because Jesus, nothing happened in 2020. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, well, we, we released Royale, uh, Koi Royale in 2020 and killed it, man. Um, so that and that was a pleasant su surprise. Uh, and it's one of the things that uh, I don't know that we'd even do anything differently now, uh, knowing what we know, uh, because you know, the cake was already baked, uh, the cigar was literally coming out in March or April, and of course, the pandemic hits in March, right. You know, but we're like, you know what, let's, uh, you know, it, it, it's all ready to go, so let's just put it out there. And I'm glad we did because the, the cigar market really started to pick up in early summer. Uh, and Royale was, 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 was sort of already out there in the marketplace. And, uh, and it did very, very well last year. So um, you never really know how things are going to uh, gonna go. Um, but as it relates to Spectre, we're coming out with, with uh, Spectre this year. Uh, and it'll, this will be the last release for a while at least. Because, you know, Spectre is not about, um, you know, uh, keep, trying, rolling, keep rolling out new stuff now. Yeah, and it's not trying to buy, trying to outdo the previous one. It's, Spectre is really a, a, a result of you know certain tobaccos that we have available uh, that we don't anticipate having available going forward. So it's it's about using special material. Mm -hmm. So if, if you don't have uh, the requisite you know special uh, uh, material you know to, 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 to warrant making a cigar um, um, you know that status, then then you don't do it. Uh, so, you know, luckily, um, you know, we had some, some, some good stuff that we're working with for this release and, uh, and maybe some stuff to develop as far as some tobaccos that we have, you know, within our ecosystem that I'm not aware of. But there's nothing right now that I'm inspired to say, okay, let's, 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 you know, make this part. Because it, it, Spectre, for what it is, it's, it's, it's a pretty big undertaking to release a cigar that you're only going to have a few hundred box stuff. Because you still got to make yeah. the packaging, yes, and the design behind it, and it's very, very expensive. And 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 the, the the smaller volume you do as far as the packaging, the more expensive it is. If you guys haven't seen the uh, seen the box, believe me, it's gorgeous. As a matter of fact, this is what the box looks like. Hold on, I'm gonna show you. Right here, not only do they have the box, as you see, they also have. It comes with a card. Okay. It's a black, a black card, a Cohiba black card. It's, okay. It's, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's just what it's, you, it's, it's just a, what you're, it's what you guys authenticity. <laughs> so there you go. That's what it looks like, and it tastes just as good as the packaging looks. You hear me? It tastes just as good as the packaging looks. Now every year, you guys would roll out and do the, um, the unveiling of sorts mm -hmm. at at the, at the, the trade show. Mm -hmm. um, how are you guys this year? Um, are you guys going to be there this year? Uh, no, won't, won't be at the show this year. Um, uh, we, we will have a presence at um, uh, uh, TPE, uh, Tobacco Plus, um, which is, uh, that's happening. That's happening in a few weeks, actually. Uh, so we, we will be out there. I won't personally, um, or any personalities, but as a company, we will have representation out there. Right. Uh, but, but specifically the show you're talking about, uh, PCA. Uh, yeah, we're not participating uh, uh, this year, so okay. I won't be there. Um, you know, which, which is not necessarily a bad thing as it relates to Spectre, because even with that, you know, uh, it's sort of uh, unveiled in that people see it. Mm -hmm. um, very few people get a few samples of it, but the cigar doesn't really ship until the fall anyway. Um, so, you know, it gives us uh, just kind of more time to make sure we, we, we button up the packaging, make sure everything is uh, solid and ready to go before we start shipping it out in the summer. So, I mean, in the fall. In the fall, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, so. Now, is this the, the Series M? Are we looking at a limited, a limited run? Oh, yeah, what are we looking uh, at? Um, um, 5,000 boxes, uh, 10 count boxes, 5,000 available um, this year. And, uh, we, uh, we're, we're anticipating doing it again next year and it's going to be sort of the same sort of premise and, and that's just really as a result of um, Titan of Bronze being um, a, a small op operation. I don't know if you've had a chance to, to go down there, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very, very uh, limited production um, uh, capability. So 
um, we had to figure out, okay, how can we stage this production in? Uh, and then it's not just producing the cigars, it's also the packaging there, which if you ever go to the factory, you'll see it's just it's just a lot. And, and when these, these boxes, which we make the boxes at our factory in Honduras, shout out to Hatsa. Um, when they come in, you know, the, just the, just the, the, the packaging alone, the pallets to get the boxes in to physically right. pack up the cigars, and it's a very very arduous. Thank you for watching another episode of Cigar Conversation. For more information or to comment on previous shows, visit us at cigarconversations.com. Or if you'd like to appear on a future show or advertise with Cigar Conversations. Send us an email request at ads at cigarconversations.com.